Welcome back to Golden Handcuffs. Hey guys, welcome back. Yeah, another day, another ep, but this is a little different. I know, I'm excited about this one. We're going to call this one Misfit Managers. <laughs> Part one. Part one. I've had a lot of Misfit Managers. Honestly, so have I. I have also gotten lucky though. I've had a couple managers that I absolutely love, but I think this industry in particular, <laughs> you have some interesting experiences with the people who are supposed to be in charge oh, and yeah. it calls for some good stories I think especially in nightlife yeah because it's kind of like a risque like the dark side yeah but I mean you still have to be professional <laughs> it's still a job <laughs> right yeah. speaking of which let me just roll into this one then I actually grew to love this manager he was like super cool but at first I did not understand him okay I was the new girl right at this club and before every shift, you know, we do a pre-shift and they give a rundown of what the tables are going to be and what to expect throughout the night, who's got what section and yada yada. So I'm sitting there in pre-shift and this manager starts, the way that I can describe it is like it was intended for a college football team in a locker room. <laughs> it's like how he started talking. Mind you, there's like 10 girls, Like you know? hyping you guys up in a good way? Like pep um, talk or like, it was like this is aggressive? It was aggressive. It was like F-bomb after F-bomb after like, if you guys don't want to fucking be here, then there's the fucking door and fuck, 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 fuck. And everyone was just kind of like, oh, here we go. And I'm like, he's joking, right? I like turned to the girls like, it's a joke. She's like, oh no, like you'll get and you used to it. And you were new because you didn't know. I was brand new to that venue, yeah. Oh my God. And he was like, look, man, if I could be a female, then I would fucking do this and fucking do that. I'd be making all the Wild. money in this motherfucking club. Blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, what the? It's all. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. Crazy. Oh yeah, girl. I was I was thrown for a loop for that one. I but it was it was so many f bombs. Like the point he was trying to get across. The only thing I remembered was the f bombs. So. You're like cool. So for today's shift is fuck. Yeah. And fuck <laughs> and then oh fuck. I need to remember fuck. Exactly. Interesting. But not shocking, I guess. Now he, he was had, a coach in the past life. He he must have been because he definitely wasn't talking to a room of twenty women. <laughs> Wait, so did you like him, though? I ended up liking him, yeah. It was just the initial meeting that I was like... Was he like that every pre-shift? Every single pre-shift. Wild! Every pre-shift, that was like his montage. like Or anytime he wanted to talk about anything in general, that's what it was. So you just kind of like got used to it. And it was like, oh, that's just who he is. He thinks that he's like hyping us up. Because you know, you're supposed to get like rah-rah on your pre-shift. Yeah, like, like pep rally. Yeah, let's send out all these bottles. Let's make a shit ton of money, yada, yada. But it was just, I would say it was borderline inappropriate. But like, you know, we don't really care. It was just jarring at the time. Yeah, just because you were thrown into it and had no idea. It was just not like any other pre-shift that I had ever had, ever. Well, also like coming from being a server and then going into the nightlife industry like as a bottle girl. Yeah. The pre-shifts definitely are different. <laughs> very different I have an experience um kind of with like a micromanager oh the worst yeah he was awful like always looking over your shoulder everything was tit for tat like would create situations that didn't even happen but like made it seem like you're always doing something wrong and it's like okay what are you even talking about right well what is the point of that though I don't know but it's like, get off my back, bro. Like, yeah. I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for 10 years. Yeah. But there was this one situation that really pissed me off because at some places that you work at, you're not supposed to drink. Some places it's encouraged. Mm -hmm. But at this particular spot, we were not allowed to drink. And I didn't when I worked there. And I was at the table. I had poured a round of shots and I was passing them out to everybody. And it was like a super fun, like hyped up group. Like they all wanted to toast and stuff. And... I was still passing out the shots, right, as they were toasting. Like, it was a premature toast, <laughs> yeah. but, like, people still didn't have all of their shots. Mm -hmm. So it looked like I was... Cheersing? Cheersing. <laughs> oh, no. I was passing out the shots. Oh, And he God. comes up right behind me and goes, you better not fucking take that shot. Also... I was like, excuse me? Yeah. Are you, like, staring me down right, right now? Right, right. And also, like, no, sir, I'm passing these out. Well, that's the thing. Shoo. Is, yeah. <laughs> And don't curse at me. I don't I don't do well when people curse at me. Like, don't whisper that shit in my ear. Like, there I'll, is, like, a lot of cussing, though, in so, nightlife. Dude. It's, like, normal. But also, like, don't direct it towards me. Don't please. direct it towards me. I'll either fight you or I'll cry. <laughs> it's a mm -hmm. fine line. <laughs> Depends on, on what kind of day you're having. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I don't like the micromanagers. I don't like it's that like, either. It's like, let me do my thing. Yeah. I do work well under pressure, but when it's, like, 
you're breathing down my back on everything I do. Yeah. Also, like, certain places, there's a service bartender that rings everything in. There's other places where, like, you're in charge of your own tabs. And I was working at a place where it's like, you're in charge of your own tabs. You ring in absolutely everything. And to see your manager then going through your tabs and checking your subtotals, checking your minimums, checking to see that this was rung in, like, switching stuff around. I'm like, dude. It's like, do you want to be the bottle girl? Yeah. Actually? And don't touch my fucking tab. Like, stay in your lane. Yeah, stay in your lane. Or if you want to bring something in, ring it in under your own number. You know, I don't like when people touch my Oh, no, because that'll get you in trouble. That'll get you in trouble. And then it gets confusing because I'm like, where did this come from? Did somebody bring out this bottle because I didn't ring it in? Do I bring out another bottle because do they have it yet? It just is too much. Well, and like comps on your tabs and like voids. Voids. That's never a good look. Yeah. Luckily, I've worked at a lot of places where it's very lax. Like, very lax to the point where like the girls run the show. So like... The micromanaging is to a minimum, but there's certain times still that I'm like, yeah, shoo. (laughs) Yeah, shoo. I like it when they let us run the show because it's like, you hired us for a job. We know what we're doing. Yeah. Unless there's somebody just fucking up and you're having to like check on them every two seconds. But for somebody that like hasn't given you any issues and does their job good, like get away from me. Do you prefer a male or a female manager? I don't, you know what? I haven't had any female managers in my nightlife career. Really? No, never. Not like my main manager. There's yeah. been like female events team managers, which I, I love. Yeah. Um, but I've never had a female be like my direct manager. Yeah. I don't think I would like it though. I don't know. Have you had female like like restaurant managers? How did that, how did that go? Yeah, but they were all older. I know of people that have been female managers where it's like you become friends with them and then it kind of gets a little weird sometimes when you have to mix business with like friendships or pleasure or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But I think I liked the guys better because I can like, you know, (laughs) I'm more like... (laughs) Finesse a little something. I can weasel some shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Batch your eyelashes a few times. uh, Yeah, I would definitely (laughs) take that... To my advantage. Yeah. With a female, it's, it's a no It's not working, bitch. It's You're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. <laughs> oh, okay. That's funny. Have you ever had somebody be like inappropriate, inappropriate? I mean, there's been a couple that have been inappropriate towards me. But one of my bosses, I had been basically sexually assaulted in the club, right? And Wait, by your boss? No, no, not by my boss. Okay. By a customer just walking around. Okay. This happens a lot. Like, mm. you know, you're a girl in the club. Like, people will try to grab you or, like, smack you in the butt. It's when they try to, like, I don't know what it is, but there's been a lot of, like, random people try to touch my vagina. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm putting out there. I don't know if, it, if they're seeing it through the the panties. I don't know what it is, but it's like a little grab. And I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, I was so it. pissed off that this guy did that. Like, yeah. that's like way too intimate. Like, get your hands off of me. Yeah. If it's a smack on the butt, I hate that as well. But like, it's not my vagina. Right, okay? right, right. Anyway, I was like mortified. And this guy was so creepy. He was doing it to all the girls, not just me. But I went to the manager and I'm like, we have to kick this guy out. He's so inappropriate. Yeah. Like, get him out of here now. Like, security, my manager, he looks at me in my face and was just like, well, that's a part of the industry, honey. I'm like, so getting sexually assaulted in this nightclub is just a part of my job? Wow. Yeah. Didn't kick him out. Let him stay in there the whole rest of the night. That's terrible. That would make me hold on to, like, animosity. Because you're supposed to feel like they would go to bat for you, whether it's a declining car. And, like, protect us. Right. I'm like, you fucking loser. And there's something about the service industry, too, in general, that, like, I feel like your relationship with your coworkers is a stronger bond than, like, working a nine-to-five. It's like you're in the trenches with them. You're going through massive crowds, getting sexually assaulted. We're like a sorority. Yeah, you just have a different type of bond and, like, level of, like, protection and whatever. So then to hear that, you're just like... I know. Yeah. Did someone try to grab your dick? You know? He was How a would you feel? sleazy manager, too. Like, Ugh. he was the kind that was, like, always trying to get at the girls and stuff. It's like, don't be a sleazy boss. Have I, you had one like that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It sticks out in my mind. This was probably my first sleaze ball. It was in California. And it was during the interview process. Like, I hadn't even been hired yet. And this guy was already being gross. <laughs> So there was like three people interviewing me. I just me. don't respect that. No, dude. And this is this is what's crazy is like I don't give off that vibe, especially not during the interview process. You know, like I'm fully clothed, right? Yeah. And there's three of them sitting across the desk and then there's me. And we're going through yada, yada, yada. They're asking me questions, whatever. And this guy is, <laughs> he's on the side of the table, right? All of a sudden I see him like this. Leaning. <laughs> 
over the side of the table, like trying to look at my like legs and up, like tr- trying to check me out, but I'm sitting down, what? like and I'm clear as day to cl- you, like directly in front of me. I would have been like the other two must have known that like this is like who he is, whatever. He was like looking me up and down, and I was just like trying to maintain eye contact with you know the person I was answering the question. <laughs> and but like, like maintain, but I'm like losing. My, yeah, I'm losing my train of thought because I'm like, <laughs> is anybody gonna say anything? You know, like what the. I mean, I ended up getting the job, and, like, I hate that guy's oh guts, God. but, like... Wait, was he weird after you got the job, too? Yeah, you know, he pretended to not know my name for the first two months. So every time I'd go to work, he'd be like, what's your name? At first, I was like, oh, haha, like, maybe he thinks this is, like, a joke, whatever. Like, the first two times, I kind of, like, let it go. And then it started to get irritating. I'm like, you fucking know my name. Like, don't play me like I'm just... Because I, I was already, like, a little bit, I guess, of the outcast of the group. So, like, for then my manager, who's already creeped me out, you know, is then, like, pretending that, like, he has no idea who I am. I'm like... And it's like... Are you flirting with happens, me? Or are you, like, like... More than once or twice, you're like, wait, I cannot tell if this is a joke now. Yeah. And now it's I like, feel alienated. And even if it was a joke, it's not funny anymore. It's like when somebody does the same, like, joke to you a couple <laughs> times, you're like, haha. And then it's like, okay, buddy, like, gain really some new material. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm also notorious for, like, hooking up with my bosses as well. Um, <laughs> you like that authority figure. I guess so. I guess so. There's been a couple that, you know. I do, yeah. too, girl. That's that's why, I, you know, I married I mean, a cop. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you got a cop. You got it. You got <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, I get it. This was, like, years and years and years ago. But this was at a restaurant, actually. But everybody in there, you know, Look, knew we were Look, the restaurant up. industry can get messy, oh, too. You're okay. with them Obviously, all the time. Honestly, it's probably messier in the restaurant industry. It's messier when it comes to relationships, <laughs> Yeah. I think. For sure. Yeah. There's like more men and women. You well, know? how this whole situation even came about, like how we even started getting to like like each other and like hook up was my hair caught on fire at the job. It dipped in a candle. Oh my and God. he took me to the back office and he was just like brushing out like, you know, my hair. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> Okay. Like, <laughs> oh my god. That's we're so a intimate. Moment. Yeah, that and is. And then the moment, then I like, you know, I was like god. trying to create those moments I all the time. I do love when a guy brushes your hair, though. I There's know. something so sweet about it. I'm just well, like. Well, had daughters, too. I'm so. a princess. <laughs> I know, right? Anyway, anyway. Yeah, so one thing led to another, and then, it, you know, we were just like hooking up. Anyway, he had this baby mama, right? Baby mama drowned. Yeah, and one of her friends worked with us. So, like, I think she knew we were hooking up and was not a fan of it. So So was he, like, with the baby mama on the low? Or was he, like, this was a crazy baby mama? So they were fiancés. So they were still together? No, they weren't together when we started hooking up. Okay. Yeah, like, it had been a couple months. You know, I don't think it was because of me, but... (laughs) (laughs) No, they weren't together. They were not together. Come on. Who do you think I am? Girl, I don't marker. know, but this ain't sounding good. <laughs> um, so. Okay. He had his whole family come in one night. You know, I guess they were celebrating something, and they had a huge section in the back. Tell me why she came, like she was there with the kids. He put me as the server to serve his family and his baby mama. Dude. Was, was this like a tactic though, like hide in plain sight? I don't know, but I marched to the back and I was like, I'm cutting myself, I'm leaving. If you think I'm going to be serving your family and your baby mama who like knows we're hooking up and doesn't like me clearly, like, what are you doing? What was his excuse? What did he say? I don't even know. He was just like, okay, okay. And like put a different person on there. And I bounced. Dude. You know what that feeling when you're in an uncomfortable situation, you just get that feeling in your like whole body? That would be that situation. I was like, I'm not about to get jumped. So did you uh, keep hooking up after that? Of course. Oh, my God. Oh, God. But I was very annoyed. Yeah, because that's disrespectful as fuck. Wait, I also (laughs) tried to hold his baby right in front of her. Christine, you're going to hell. He was like, no. He he looked at me and was like, you're not going to hold my baby. Oh, my God. Anyway, okay. These were the Atlanta days, huh? Oh, yeah. These were the Ah, Russian Atlanta days. This was Atlanta, Christine. Yeah, I'm a completely different human now. (laughs) Not you trying to hold the baby. Okay, let's let's, let's take the heat off of you. What do you you got for me? Well, the heat is still not on me, but this is... um, Okay, so back to being disrespectful. I was working at a place, and I was actually serving and managing at the same time because our manager was out of town, whatever. So I, I stepped in to help out. 
So it was just me there, right? It was a pretty slow night. I was the only server. And when you're managing, you got to be in control of like, make sure the DJ is working, make sure the lights are working, make sure everything is working, basically. So we had one buyer come in and it was a pretty high minimum. I think he was like a $5,000 minimum, which was really good for like an empty-ish club. Oh, yeah. And I was serving the buyer. I was like talking to the promoters that brought him in. I'm making drinks. And all of a sudden, I feel like ice hit the back of my head. And I turned around like ready to like fight because I'm like, who the fuck just threw like their drink at the back of my head? Turned around. It was the owner of my establishment. Threw it at my head. And he was just trying to get my attention from across the aisleway so that I could turn the lights down. The lights weren't dark enough for his liking, I guess. And he threw he ice at you? grabbed a handful of ice out of the ice bucket and chucked it across the thing to get my attention. Yeah. Because oh, I would be fighting the owner. You know what's crazy, though? I just kind of, like, turned around. I saw that it was him. I saw that he was trying to get my attention. He was like, like come here. Like, whatever. Because he's not on radio. He was just there to, like, party, you know? Get your lazy ass up and walk <clears throat> across the hall and tell me. But, you know, we've been, like, put in such crazy ass situations at that place that, like, I'm almost numb to it. So I didn't even think that it was crazy until my buyer looked at me and he was like, who the fuck was that? Who was that? And I was like, oh, like, that's our owner, like, whatever. He's trying to get my attention. And he was like, I will never forget that. That was the craziest shit I've ever seen. I can't wait until the day that you don't have to work here anymore. Like, yada, yada, yada. Oh, that's so sweet. It was was so sweet. And I also was totally embarrassed because I'm like, dude, this is the only money that you've got coming into this club tonight. Is this, and you're going to do that in front of the buyer? Come on. I never said anything to him about it. I told my manager who was out of town. He never did anything about it. It was just like swept under the rug, like, which is fine. Like, I like my job enough. I don't need it to be a huge deal. But like, at least be like, yo, I'm sorry. That was not cool. All right, cool. Well, there's so many things we we just brush under the rug and not make it a big deal. Because if you were to go be like, hey, just so you know, like, I did not like that. Yeah. He'd be like, oh, just chill out. You're being too, like, you're taking it too serious. And then it's like manipulating it right. into a situation where it's like you're making it a big deal. Right, and that's like, oh, don't mess around with Amber because she's going to do this or don't talk to Amber because yeah. she's going to... It's like, actually, no, just don't fucking throw ice at my head. Don't embarrass me in front of the buyer. The only buyer in the whole place. You're going to... And and then he's not going to come back because he knows now. Or I could have lied. It's ran and... by some fucking clowns. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> but he was embarrassed for me. And then I realized, I was like, oh, wait, you're right. That's not okay. Not okay. Yeah, girl. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just part one to the segment. I know. I have so many stories. Yeah. Uh, Like, this video would probably be, like, hours long. I know. But we're not going to name anybody because we're not trying to ruin anybody. But And also, like, I just have to say this. Full disclosure, I love my managers now. Yeah. Like, wouldn't have it any other way. So just know this isn't about, like, any current people. Mine aren't anyway. Are yours? Not that you'd admit this on on (laughs) camera, but... No. Mm Mm-mm. No. Actually, I made all this shit up. I don't even know these people. None of these stories are true. (laughs) Anyway, thanks for tuning in, y'all. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. Follow us, subscribe, repost, send your questions. Send your stories. Yeah, send your stories at Golden Handcuffs Pod. And we'll see you next week on Amber's Couch. Ow, ow. Bye.